Hello. In this activity, we are going over integrators, <clears throat> both ideal integrators as well as non-ideal integrators that are actually first-order low-pass filters. So let's get started. Draw an ideal inverting integrator. So in terms of a circuit topology, we're using an operation, um, operation amplifier in an inverting configuration. And in the feedback, we are replacing the feedback resistor with a capacitor. So I'm going to call this RA, and this is the capacitor. We have the voltage input and the voltage output. So as always, number one is the topology or a skeleton. I mentioned in the introduction that in electronics, as opposed to just seeing a course in electric circuit, circuits where most of the circuits are just there to illustrate how to apply the circuit analysis techniques, nodal analysis, mesh analysis, superposition, fabric equivalence, nodal equivalence. In electronics, these circuits are actually practical circuits that solve specific problems. And so it is important to always start thinking about these topologies and learning the topologies. How do you solve particular problems? So here we have an integrator. And something that we can do once you look at a topology before applying circuit analysis is to start getting a, developing an intuitive understanding and doing a qualitative analysis of the circuits prior to applying the mathematics. So qualitatively, what is this circuit going to do? Um, let's look at um, a, a simple, what a capacitor does, let's, let's look at it as a function of frequency, right? This is a, a frequency, a circuit that is going to be frequency dependent. And we know that, well, the impedance of a resistor is a resistor, frequency dependence, but the impedance of a capacitor is one over J omega C. And so, What's going to happen? Let's look at it at low frequencies and at high frequencies. So when omega is equal to zero at very low frequencies, we have one over j omega c, one over omega. What's going to happen to the impedance of the capacitance of the capacitor? The impedance is infinity, or what we have is that the capacitor is an open. Okay, we have this circuit effectively. Open. And so what's going to happen at the output? We are working on without negative feedback. And if we are working without negative feedback, the amplifier given the high gain that you have in the operational amplifier, is going to saturate, right? Ideally, the V output will be infinity, but in reality, it just will saturate at the rails, a positive or negative. So we already see that this ideal integrator is going to have a significant issue, a significant problem at DC frequencies, okay? Likely it's going to saturate. At high frequencies, As we increase the frequency, the impedance of the capacitor is going to go down. So this is going to be zero. And what you get is that the capacitor is a short. And what we get is that the output voltage is going to be zero. So if we wanted to think about this, this um, circuit as a filter, it is clearly going to be a low pass filter, meaning a low frequencies has high gain. And at high frequencies, the output is going to be zero. Let's actually do the analysis. Now, when we are doing 
analysis of RLC circuits, so once we put capacitors and inductors, we do that either in the S domain, using Laplace and Ford techniques, or otherwise we will use phasors, or in the frequency domain. But just this time, um, in order to follow the same type of analysis techniques that we had before in the time domain, I'm going to do it a time domain analysis, which we will never typically do in more complex systems or circuits. And why don't we do it in an RLC network or with additive elements once you have capacitors and inductors? It's because you end up with integral differential equations, as you will see in this case. So if we are going to play analysis, um, what is our typ typical technique? We are going to apply kirchhoff karrn law, so nodal analysis. Sum of currents leaving the node is equal to zero. We apply it to the most complex node, in this case, the inverting input node. And we have the current going this way, and the current going that way, and the current to the operational amplifier. But we assume that the bias current in the operational amplifier is zero. So what do we have? What is the current? And I'm going to call this Vm for negative inverting input. The current from in the branch going through Ri will be the difference in voltage Vn minus Vi over Ri, applying Ohm's law, plus, and now we have to find the current going through the capacitor. In the time domain, what is the current going through a capacitor? Well, it is. C, and then the derivative of the voltage across the capacitor. So in this case, the voltage will be, with this convention, Vn minus V out over the derivative of this with respect to time. And then we have the other current entering the bias current, In, which is zero, equals to zero. Again, this is why we do not do this analysis in the time domain. As you start adding capacitors and inductors, the current voltage characteristics of these devices involve derivatives and integrals, and so you end up with these integral differential equations. So with this, B, what do we apply? Do we have negative feedback in this case? We do. There's a connection back from the output back to the input. Again, be careful, because under some conditions, the circuit, like a DC, right, the capacitor becomes an open, and so you don't have negative feedback, and that's one of the reasons why this operation amplifier is going to saturate at a DC. So let's go ahead and uh, for frequencies about DC, we have the Vn, the operational amplifier is going to adjust the output so that the negative input voltage is roughly equal to the positive one, which in this case is equal to zero, which means that we can substitute in that equation above. So what do we get? We get that minus Vi over Ri minus C, this is, so this is zero, this is zero, and to take the minus out, minus the derivative of the output voltage or time is equal to zero. Or that C dV dT equals to one over Ri minus the input. And if we wanted to find an expression for the output voltage, we could integrate both sides, right? And we will get that the output voltage, and I am assuming here that the capacitor is initially at time equals zero. It does not have any, any initial charge. So I'm going to, this is one 
over ri times c integral. So I'm integrating basically both sides here with respect to t, okay? Integral vi, I'm going to express of t, although throughout it's a vi of t, dt from 0 to t. Again, I'm assuming that the capacitor is initially discharged. So what we find is that indeed this circuit integrates uh, the output voltage is a scale version of the integral of your input voltage. Okay. Now let's do this analysis um, using S domain techniques and then frequency analysis, which is typically what we are going to do. So in the S domain, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick our qualitative analysis and our time domain analysis and just minimize it so we have it there. Okay. So for S domain. So in the S domain, as a reminder, you probably studied this in your circuit analysis course when you were going over Laplace transforms and the applications to circuit analysis. The impedance of a resistor is the resistance. The impedance of the capacitor is equal to 1 over SC, and the impedance of an inductor is SL. Now, in S domain, you can solve the circuit as if we, you were working in DC, meaning, and we can solve even the general circuit for any impedance. So this can be, a, I'm going to call this CI and CF, the input, the output. This is just an inverting amplifier. In the S domain, this is actually minus F, the impedance in the feedback over the impedance at the input times the input, okay? We have done this before for the mental amplifier. Let's go ahead and, and do it in general, then I just will plug in the impedances. So S domain, you can have any impedance. Let's go ahead and uh, do the analysis, Vn. You have to use capitals when I'm working in the S domain or in the frequency domain. Vn minus Vi over C1 plus V Vn minus V out over Cf plus zero, this other current is equal to zero. And so what we have here also is that Vn is equal to Vp is equal to zero, which enables me to cancel that and that. And what I get is minus V in over C in is equal to V output over CF, or the output is equal to minus CF over C in times the input, which means that the gain is minus CF over CI for any inverting topology, independently of those impedances, right? So we wanna do the analysis now. All I have to do is plug in, in this case, what do I have? An R, in this case, what is the impedance? One over SC, and I just plug it into the equation to find the expression for the output voltage or for the gain, which in this case, we will refer to this as the transfer function, pH of S, minus CF over C in, here also the gain, V output of S, minus CF, CI, PI of S, okay? 
So let's go ahead and find the transfer function. In this case, I'm going to just write it here. H of S equals minus C F over C I, which is equal to in this case, minus one over S C over R I. And this is equal to minus one over R I C times S, or typically you will put it in the form minus one over S R I C. So this is our transfer function, which if we want to do the frequency response, we can do the substitution of S equals J omega to evaluate it for real frequencies, and with that we can do the frequency response. Now, in the S domain, we can find now the expression for any output, doesn't have to even be sinusoidal, as V of S equals H of S, this transfer function, times the V of S. So you, you can do the Laplace transform of any input signal, multiply it as a function, fu function, and find the output. If you want to see then the solution in the time domain, you do the inverse Laplace transform. If you just want to see what happens in the frequency domain, like in this case, you can do the S equals J omega. Let's do that. Okay, so let's find the frequency response. So this is five. Frequency response. So to find the frequency response, we pick H of S, and we evaluate it for S equal to J omega. And so what we get in this case is minus, 1 over j omega r i c. Now this frequency response, now you can vary the frequency and see how this is going to behave, what type of, as well as, notice this is a complex number, so you can look at the magnitude, H of J omega, the magnitude of this, right? Which clearly you have that it is minus one over J, sorry, no J, over omega R I C. Or you can look at the frequency, the phase in this case, which you have the minus, which in this case the phase is, is trivial, will be. 90 degrees, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot this. That will be the body plot. And uh, we can do something like this. F, I'm going to do the magnitude. And this decreases linearly. At zero, you get something that will be infinity, right? This is decreasing like that, linearly. At minus 20 dB per decade. Okay? So it's a low pass filter in the sense that it's going to attenuate high frequencies, right? 